is meant for an adult audience. Love, love line may contain sexually oriented content. Mm, listener discretion is advised. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician. Bob's, 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 Bob's. <laughs> Oh, thank Christ, no guests tonight. Yeah, it's good. Enough. Those pesky, troublesome guests. Always just they're getting they're, in the way of your rants. They're bees in my bonnet. Yeah, yeah. You understand? Yeah, I got to yeah. pay attention. Yeah, you got to talk to them. You can't just go on. Well, I talk at them. But I have to act interested. Yeah, it's tough. Oh, and the I new know. CD. Oh, number one on the Latin Grammy charts. Oh, it's a fantastic. Oh, oh. That's a good guy. So I like that. Oza that Motley? Yeah. Yeah. Nice guys. Yeah, In good fact, guys. I, can, I like I that. I hadn't heard all those uh, epithets about the Mexican-American in quite some time. Really? Like, well, who gave them out? You. you Me? Yeah. I did not. Not epithets. Well, epithets like be- beaner and... No, I didn't do that. Yes, you Wet did. back? Yeah, you were using all kinds of words like that. Oh, really? I'd explain to my kids what they uh, meant. On the air? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Didn't even know it. It's huh, good. Really? I didn't do it on the air. Well, maybe not, but you did it in this room. Was that beaner? Wet back? You, at no. the very beginning, at the very beginning, where it was when you keep yelling at me for being quiet because it was so uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. well, well, maybe I was maybe. using it sometimes. Yeah, you're not, be, you're not being derogatory. I use a, ra- a racial epithet to, to to make an example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you of, were using the, somebody who's who's a racist. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I, remember, I remember being uncomfortable, but uh-huh. not uh, totally inappropriate. Okay. And I just I hadn't heard those terms in a long time. That's all. They're, they're very creative time. terms, you say. Very, very yeah. historical. Uh, I like it when they just name the race after the food, like kraut, you know? Mm. It's pretty simple. It's like, well, they eat sauerkraut. We'll call them krauts. Although, it, it doesn't seem to mean all that much. Like, I don't know. I mean, Amer- as American, you might be called a hot dog or corn dog or ch- cheeseburger or something. It's sort of, eh. Yeah. Well, it's just still, and by the way, I put, I put this challenge uh, out to, we call American Indians uh, the maize, the corn. I, I here I put this challenge out to uh, out to the public. Uh, still looking for a good guy, a good name for Whitey. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, a good a good derogatory, descriptive. Yeah, digging. Yeah, I got to tell you, cracker just uh, it doesn't it, stick it, quite it, right. It's 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 it's, it's water it's on easy, a, yeah. on a yeah. duck's back. It just yeah. it just rolls right off. Yeah, you need some Nothing. Sticks. Whitey's not good. Honky's kind of funny. Whitey's Hon- good. Round eyes good. Yeah, it's just it's just sort of it, it. You guys need something, you know. You need you you need an N word. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, why don't you work on that? Uh, me. Speaking of work on stuff, I can't do that. Yeah, you can. I can't come up good one good for myself. Do you, you know what I mean? I for see. for my people, the other countries. That's up to the other races. Right. Let's see what you can do, everybody. I bet Iraq's got some good good stuff. Iraq? They must have. No, some. no. You know that's the problem with those people. They, for the, here's what they do: they they build a horrible effigy. They take a you know they take a, a mop handle and they tape a, a picture of Bush to it from the USA Today, and then they burn it and they all jump on top of it and laugh like maniacs. <laughs> that's like. <laughs> or they take the American flag. It's a bed sheet with a Crayola written on it. They screw up the flag and then they burn that. By the way, can't get hold of an American flag. Got to use a bed sheet. Well, someone's got to send them some flags so they can have a proper burning out in the middle of the town. I always like it when one of them, then their sleeve catches on fire. Half of them are barefoot or wearing sandals, like while they're jumping on the effigy of Bush, which, again, is the mop handle with the uh, picture from USA Today, tape, duct tape to the front of it. Or cartoon, like yeah, hand-drawn. Yeah, they're not. They just, uh, look, I'll tell you. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, a, what a guy with an entre- entrepreneurial spirit would do, Drew. I'd like to head over there with about 10,000 units of American flags. These are paper. This is paper that's doused in kerosene. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, that stuff goes up like a Roman candle. You know what I mean? Oh, we got it's three like infected di- blankets, you mean. Yeah, three different sizes. No, no, no. No, I'm not, not an infected blanket. That's different. That's when we're trying to kill off the American Indians. Uh. I'm talking about, I'm, they're doused in kerosene. We, as soon as you put a match to them, whew, they go up, nothing better. What I'm saying is that they, they'll have such a time with it, they'll light the whole place on fire. Well, and you'll be an in, internal sort of a... Uh, here's the problem oh. with uh, burning the place uh, that's just made of mud and straw. Oh, yeah. It, don't, it don't burn. 
No, nothing burns yeah. over there. No better, no safer city to smoke in than Iraq. It's, uh, it's really like smoking on the uh, surface of Mars. It's just, uh, there's nothing but, but rock and sand everywhere. So there's no fire thing. But listen, Drew, hear me out. I head out to Iraq. I got myself a bunch of American flags. Kerosene soldiers. And again, these things, I'll, I'll make them in Indonesia or something. It'll cost me about three, four cents a unit. I'll head out there. I'll go out there with some real bush effigies, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, where, where we really, where the thing really looks like, a, I mean, you could have yeah. sex with it. Yeah, this you know will be, I mean? equivalent, it's that, be equivalent of like a Disney theme store, but even an American theme store with American specially, theme store. specially designed objects to be burned. It'll end up being like a firework stand. Yeah, yeah. You just buy, hey, you want to buy bush? Hey, here's yeah. Cheney. Uh, here's, here's, oh, oh. Here's a big fiberglass uh, Michael Moore. Put him on the roof during Christmas time, like we'll do with Santa or Frosty. He's doing put on your lawn. <laughs> like, Mark, yeah, Michael Moore, yeah, you don't want to burn him. A big, big fat. Put a light under him. Yeah, put, put, a, put, put a candle in him. Yeah, yeah just, a, just like a big fat fiberglass one like, uh, like we have with Santa. Big plastic fat this Michael. As a matter of fact, we could probably just retrofit some of the Santas that are out there already. Now you're talking. You're just merchandising some, the anti-Americanism. The it's a good tr- time. Trim the beard back Way a little. Go, put yeah. some glasses on the Santa. Uh, take the uh, take the red coat and spray paint it brown. Put some put some uh, suede patches on the sleeves. Am I going? Oh yeah. So who do you want? You want Condoleezza Rice? We got her. We got catalogs. You come on down. You buy this junk, and then it's burning time. And instead of fleecing them or flocking them like you had a Christmas tree, you soak them. You, you spray them down with kerosene or something flammable. Yeah, no, no, they're, no, they're, they're impregnated with this stuff. But I, I mean, no, no, it, no, it no, comes no, ready charge, to go. Charge extra, charge, spray it down. Spray it down. Okay, well, it I'm going to work. The point is, is this stuff goes up. to transport it all together. First light, like first, first match, guarantee. <laughs> first match, pow, goes right up. Then you have the kinds like that, that won't, you know, that won't, can't be blown out. Yeah, yeah, the novelty ones. <laughs> yeah, right. Keep going. Burning in there. Signs, good slogans, too. You know, none of this, like like when you guys call us dogs, they don't realize that not such a bad thing. You know what I mean? We got uh, Randy Jackson from uh, American Idol calling everyone dog. It's, it's yeah. no big no, thing. No. You, you, call us, can... uh, you call us dogs. We'll give you some good, I'll come up with some slogans that really cut. You know what I mean? Your, your, your career is set for you now. You got it. Head your, over your to Iraq. Path has been start selling smart. these things. Party's coming up. Yeah, you know, we got got CNN's in town. They're going to film something. You guys want to take this street? This is your headquarters. This is a Bush effigy headquarters. Burn it down. Get uh, get Michael Moore. Here's uh, you can get a you can get like a uh, get like a she, uh, Michael. What the hell? The Sheen. What's the older she, Martin Sheen? Hmm. Get one of him. You put. You put Drew, do you have to <laughs> punctuate every movement with a hand slap? What do you? I was, I was agreeing you know, with your with a oh, funny. Thank you. You know, must have been a judge. You know what? Like in a, in a, you know what you were? You were probably like a hanging judge in a past life. Like yeah, something you're like something like you must have had a gavel or something. Yeah, yeah. You used to like just saying, "I agree," but okay, yeah, yeah. order. No, no, yeah, it's probably in the Federalist. The, yeah, who the, 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 the who else? Congress. We'll, 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 we'll do we'll do like a Whoopi Goldberg. We'll we'll, we'll, we'll do all we'll do all the uh, American traitors. We'll put them out there. You can again put them on your roof. You dress the place up. Put them. You can do it as like a house guest. You do that thing where uh, you just put them at the table mm-hmm. with you while you guys uh, eat your sand or whatever you guys eat over there. Fantastic. All right, Drew. I got to get busy with yeah, this. Yeah, you better go. Can handle the rest of the yeah. show? <laughs> yes. right. the be d- careful. Somebody may have heard this and gotten, gotten ahead of you. Do they have money over there, by the way? Yeah, do they got anything? Unit, unit of exchange, I'm sure. Oil? I can get something can out of them. They pay you oil. All right. Let's, uh, let's get to the phones and uh, speak to... How much work do you think it would take to get one of those big plastic fat Santas to look like Michael Moore? Not I mean, much. just put the glasses on, trim the beard out a little, oh, yeah. put like a blazer on him. Oh, yeah. Just paint it out differently. Yeah. You know the thing about Michael Moore? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you. Let me just give a, just give a, a tip to all super goofy guys out yeah. there because Michael Moore is a super goofy guy. Yeah. And you know, he makes good films, but he's a super goofy guy. And I've realized, do you want to know what the one... And, and, and women know goofy guys and they don't want to have sex with them. It's instinctual. They don't want their goofy genes passed on. They want the jock genes. They want the conqueror genes. They want the head of the. They want the big man on campus genes passed on, not the goofy guy genes. But how do you tell? You know, I mean, there's some guys. They're sort of the same size. You know, like they're they're not big. It's kind of hard to tell who's goofy and who's not. Sometimes, watch them walk. Oh. Goofy guys' feet Go point out, out yeah. when they walk. Watch Michael Moore walk. He walks. He's got oh. he's got one one foot pointing toward uh, Medina. The other's going to Mecca. I mean, it's 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 like he's he walks with his feet further 
further out than than ahead. Yeah, it, it's uh, like you know, if ninety is just plain straight straight out, and you know zero is straight ahead, he's past forty five degrees with his feet. Oh, he yeah. walks like crazy. And then I started realizing most guys that are bad at sports are just goofy guys. They walk goofy. Well, you wonder if that is a lack of athletic training creates some of that over years. And athletic years. guys. They're sort of, they walk gracefully yeah, along, yeah. and there's not much effort, but their feet are always pointing forward. Mm-hmm. And they're a little bit, they're a little bit on the balls of their feet. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just saying, goofy dudes, take your feet, ratchet them in a little, go ahead and face them the direction you're going. By the way, it's not like your feet are going, you know, you're pointing one foot to the right, the other foot to the left, the body's going straight. It's It's got to be like. It equalizes out. It equalizes out, but it's like saying it's like saying I got a car with a bad wheel that pulls to the right. So instead of fix it, I'll go get the one to the left to pull to the left, and that way I'll plow forward. Eh, point the feet straight, everybody. Goofy dudes, straighten out the feet. You'll get light. Yes, Drew. No, I'm telling you. Still got them jeans. But you know what I'm talking about with the goofy yeah, guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Feet out. The question though, here's the question: If you're a goofy guy, do you go with the goof like Michael Moore does? Or do you try to. Well, he's embraced his goof. Yeah, do you embrace and it or do you he, try to tune it up a little bit? No, he can get laid. It doesn't matter. It's just like, um, you know, whatever. He's, he's a filmmaker. But what do you do as a goofy guy? You tune, tune it as up? A goof, you, is a goofy you guy... go for goof. If the goofy, just walk straight and forget about the rest? Well, listen. If you're a goofy guy who half of Hollywood is in love with, yeah. you don't have to straighten your feet out. If you're a goofy guy and you're uh, the you know, working at the Starbucks yeah. like Chris's brother, yeah. you've got to straighten Chris those feet out. Guy. Not a goofy guy. I, I'm, I'm not saying if you were he's like, a goofy yeah. guy. I'm just saying if you got his gig and you're goofy, yeah. you got to... Now, gotta, the guy Chris was meeting with to go over his schedule... Goofy guy, yeah, goofy, guy. goofy guy. All right, all right. you got to take those feet, goofy guys, and straighten it, straighten it up. And l- listen, everybody, take a look at yourself. Just walk, uh, take a little walk, take a look in the mirror when you walk. See those feet don't go in all goofy directions. Straighten them out. There Smooth it out. Know what I'm saying? Take them saying? Let's go. Break it down. Let's go, guys. Let's break it down. I'm trying to help you. <laughs> How much of that, Drew? What do you think women think of that when they see that goofy foot walk? They, 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 if they if they assess it, it's not a conscious assessment. But but. It becomes part of the if tally. I, it's part I, of the tally. If I could put a probe in them, the vagina would uh, dry up like an ashtray. Mm. Interesting. I, I was thinking about how, think v- about it. How the vagina reacts today in, Boom. My, in my "What Nature Wants" book that I'm going to write. Dries up like a yeah. sand I ashtray. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about all the different things that should be in that book. Like 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 an ashtray. Yeah. Boom. What nature wants? Vanessa. Yeah. You're 16. Yeah. What's happening? Nothing much. Okay. Um, I had a boyfriend, and I had sex with him when I was um, 16, well, yeah, and um, I was on my period, and I was just wondering, does that mean, like, can I get pregnant if I have my period? No. Yes. Not really. It means you can't. It's not not your likely, but you can. Technically possible. You had had sex during your period? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Wow. Uh, It'd be a good idea to take, that's pretty good for the guy a virgin. How old, how old, she was a virgin, right? Yeah. And he was too, or no? Yeah, we both were. Yeah. Wow, that's a baptism by fire, or or whatever. You know what I mean? Or, I mean, it, or, or baptism by. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, you know. I, I'm just I'm just saying it's like uh, yeah I've only you know I've only um, I've only driven in uh, one car in my life and it was uh, it was a funny car. Yeah, it was a jet. <laughs> yeah, it was like a top fuel car. It's like wow, never been a Pinto, huh? Uh, okay, here's the deal. You you should have taken the morning after pill. It'd still be a good idea. When did this happen? Mm. This happened about a week ago. All right, yeah, so it's too late to do it. that now. Just Look, uh, take a pregnancy test in about a week and say uh, yeah. your prayers. Uh, okay. Yeah, you'll be fine. You should be I, fine. I don't, know, I don't know what percentage of women can get pregnant on their period. Well, I, I'm I don't not know sure. if anyone knows. And, with, and what Drew's going to say is it may, it's not necessarily your period for sure. No, what I'm going to mm-hmm. say is some not it's not as though there's a woman that could get pregnant during her period each time. Any woman randomly may become able to be pregnant. Really? Egg, random eggs get released. <laughs> not really? Yeah. All right. I mm-hmm. released a little gas. All right, baby doll. Hey, I uh, just want to tell all the kids, uh, crank by the yankers. way. Hey. Uh, forgot about that. Crank yeah. Yankers. Crank Yankers. Crank Yankers. New season. And this, um, I think Ludacris is doing a call for us tonight. But uh, new season of Crank Yankers uh, coming on tonight on uh, Comedy Central, my favorite show. All right, let's speak to uh, Dustin. 19. Dustin is 19. Dustin? Yeah, I'm here. What's happening? Uh, Freaking, I've been dating this girl now for like two years, mm-hmm. and we dated back in high school, and just recently her parents like walked in on us, 
having well, sex. That's, that's good times. What or, position? What? What position? What do you mean, what condition? What position, you retard? Like we were going at it, like full blown. Yeah. Okay. And like we looked up. <sighs> All right, now, this could be bogus right, because. Just because he didn't, he didn't. He's rehearsed. Yes, yeah. He can't, he can't, he can't even stop to in, entertain the question. No, because, he might throw him because off. he's worked it over yeah, in his head a yeah, few times. He's yeah. gone over That's it. That's not a question you're supposed to ask me. He's hit. He's, Therefore, I'm going to go forge on. Yeah. I've hit the beat. He he's he's got a few beats to hit. Yeah, yeah. And he's forging ahead. Girlfriend content. Well, folks are mad at them. Wants to know the solution. And yeah. by the way, non question. Yeah. The solution. Well, you uh you know, you get her some flowers. Take the mom you, out to dinner and, and you get him a box of cigars yeah. and all's forgiven. Non question. Dustin. Yeah. I'm labeling this call bogus. Why? Cause you're not listening. You have no real question. No, you know, I really do no, have a question. No real answer. This right. never well, happened. Let's see. What, no, I'm, I really do have a question. What's the question? I want to like end this because my family and our, they're her family. They're really close. But right now, I'm not allowed to talk to them. They're not allowed to talk to me. And I don't know what to do because I want to go up there. But the thing is, my parents say I go up there. They're not going to pay for college. Her parents say she tries to contact me. She loses college, too. And it's like, it's like they're throwing that at us saying we can't see each other anymore. And I don't know what to do. I mean, I don't like my parents throwing that at me. You just said you wanted to end this. You said you want to end it, right? Yeah, I want to, I want to freak Well, they ended it for you. Well, end it. Yeah, you got to get it. They ended it for you. It's That's done. great. <laughs> well, what's I mean, the question, you, you, you want out of the relationship, Wait, wait, right? wait. What's the question, then? No, I don't want out of the relationship. I want to end it in a way to where, like, at least we can talk to each other. Because she tries to talk to me, but I always have to tell her, no, we can't talk. If you, we talk, we're screwed. And she, mm -hmm. tells, and she tells me that, too. You, wanna like, end, you don't you want, want out? You, you want out of the relationship? But I don't, don't want out of the relationship. It. I want out of the fact that we can't talk to each other. We can't see each other. We can't do. Sh then there's nothing we can do about it. I mean, we're both adults, but it's kind of like our parents are throwing like our future at our face. So you want to get out from under the family's uh, sort of leverage they're they're pulling? Yeah, I want to. I don't want their hand in my life, but so much I've allowed so much of them to be in my life that I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Uh, all you. right. Well, wait a second. Are you in love with this girl? I love that girl more than anything in my whole entire life. And you know what? I I would be willing to throw away college. I'd be willing to throw away everything. But well, why do your parents care if you date her? Because they said that they're worried that we're going to ruin our lives. Like, when if we I have a child, when if she has a child, like where would what would we do? And that's what they keep throwing in our face. Well, well, how about the appropriate thing then to take you to get some birth control? Well, what the hell? And that's what we were doing. I mean, we did. So we you did. Can't, how can you have a child if you're? You can't have a child. Something's if you're, missing, by the way, yeah. from this story, which is uh, you're not allowed to have. No, uh, you're no, at 19. Yeah. You're not just going to bang other chicks at college. What, what are they that's, talking that's about? That's the point that I don't understand why they're why it's such a big deal. Well, I don't. There, there's something missing. First off, do your parents have some sort of kooky religion? They they do. They they go to church. Of, they go to the Church of Christ. Yeah. What's that Mormon? I don't know what is. I I don't know what I don't know what that is. It's uh. Aren't, aren't our church is the Church of Christ? No, the Church of Christ is an offspring of the LDS Church. It's oh, Mormon, okay. Because I, I I go to the uh, Beelzebub Church. <laughs> you go to the Church of Christ. All right. So they don't believe in uh, any of that uh, premarital fornication. No. Okay. Here here's the here's the thing. Let, okay. There's let me, still let me, a lot missing. Here. There's a lot missing, but but the 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 wacky religion sort of uh, clears things up again. Please, ladies and gentlemen, can we start looking at the these uh, nutballs with their re wacky religious uh, beliefs as mental disorders, like they should be looked at instead of respected and revered? Oh. Well, but this is not this is not wacky religious belief. This is just somebody with certain kind of values. No, but, to but force on their kids. I'm sure the parents got uh, their own wacky religious relief uh, belief. I'm just please, please asking as a society, please let's stop being so respectful of these nut jobs. And by the way, they have zero respect for you. And, and uh, your uh, your agnostic or your atheist beliefs or whatever they might be, why should we keep respecting these nut jobs praying to their uh, re re retarded, uh, made-up uh, cartoons in the sky? Let's just start verbally abusing them and get them to shut the F up. Thank you. Now, anyway, what Dustin needs to do is Dustin needs to uh, make a choice, and, and just like all you need to make a choice, which is when you put your hand out, when yeah. you say to somebody, look, pay for college or just pay me or whatever it is, you live the, way they the person 
who's putting the money in your hand gets to say, yeah, I'll do that. Take the garbage out. Yeah. I'll do that. Go to school. Go yeah. to this school. Go to that school. Do uh -huh. whatever. Hopefully you guys can find a balance. Uh -huh. It's just like in life. It's like hopefully you find a job that you kind of like and you have a boss that you kind of like and whatever. But when you say, hey, give me money or give take care of me or give me a car, whatever it is, you're giving the other person a right to say, first do this. Yeah. And uh, hopefully it's not uh, shoot a, a snuff film <sighs> or uh, put some tar on a but, roof. But even, well even worse. Well, he can take out college loans. He can take out a job. He can try to pay for college on his uh, own. He can do what that, millions but, and millions and millions of people before him have done, which is go to college without any help that's from right, anybody. But that doesn't mean that the girl will be able to do that, and they still won't be able to contact her. I, yeah. I, I, I don't understand what his plan is. So if they are, it's like Romeo and Juliet. If they are so hell-bent on getting together, they will. Yeah, it's more like uh, Retardio and Juliet because uh, Dustin's, you know, not too sharp. So you know what I'm saying? They will get together. How can they stop? They're both in college. How can they monitor what they're doing? They're both in college. Yes. So you decide and do whatever you want. But here's the thing, everybody: you can't resent your parents, although you do anyway, and you can't help it. But when they tell you, "Look, I'm going to pay for everything," then they have the right to tell you what else you're going to do. And it's sad that they try to control your social life this way and all that. But if you really want to clear this problem up, you get a job, you move out of the house. Isn't it true of every human relation where somebody's incumbent upon another person, they start to resent them? You know what I mean? Whenever a parent, they go, hey, hey, America takes care of other country. We're their best customer. They start resenting us. Oh, of course. It's like, you know, you, the, course. Really, the way you deal with that's that why, is... That's why the rest of the world hates you, this country. You, but you really have to be prepared. They're too inept to take care of themselves, so we bail them out and they're angry. You have to be prepared interpersonally to go, oh, oh you, you don't want this? Okay. That's it. Yeah. That's it. You, you know, but no, 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 no. That's fine. Bye. Goodbye. Right. Enjoy. Enjoy. And and you got to mean it. Right. And that's it. Yeah. That, that is the way you deal with that. And you know what? Be Order in the court. <laughs> yeah. People will be... Yeah. People will be happy coming back and creating another more mutual relationship uh, based all, on mutual respect and understanding. Uh, there's a certain uh, certain dignity in that, too, especially for a fella to say, uh, well, I guess I have to put college off for a couple semesters and get a job. And by the way, it could be a very important experience for somebody to, to do. They may need to do that. <clears throat> Let's put it this way. Um, ten years from now, I would rather hang out with the guy who said to his parents, sorry, I love this woman. Sorry, that doesn't uh, bode with your religious sensibilities. And I'm going to have to put college off for a year or so, but I'm going to go to work. I'm going to save some money. I'm going to apply for some loans. I'm going to date her, and I'll go to college. I'd rather hang out with that guy in life By the than same the guy token, who that, kisses that his parents' same, ass. Right, but that same guy could try it. It not work out and go, you know what? I need to make it all the way through graduate school. I have these particular plans. All right, I'm back. I'm back. I made some choices, and mm -hmm. yeah, I need you. Did your parents tell you what to do, Drew, when they were paying for your college? Uh, no, not nah. by that point. Then half no, it. It, I was so too broken by then. <laughs> <laughs> there, was no, there, was no, there was no chance. <laughs> you, you'd already had the Stockholm syndrome. Oh yeah, where you just—they knew you weren't leaving. They didn't have to chain you up at night. Oh yeah, you just—you're just. You're just uh, it was Patty Hearst. Yeah, you weren't going anywhere. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Oh, you know, I—I uh, I think. Uh, Oh, I always think about that. I was, uh, oh, true. I, what? what? Uh, <laughs> no, I, think it's I, I, I was, I was watching TV right before I, uh, right before I came here. Right, and we're it, supposed to be here doing, doing the best of. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, right, yeah, right okay. here. Yeah. And, uh, and I was, uh, I was watching TV, and I was, um, I was watching a thing on Richard Speck, the guy who went in and killed all those nurses, like in the sixties. He mm -hmm. went to some sort of nursing uh, compound and just killed like nine nurses, and and one of them, one of them rolled under a bed and hid early while well, he took each and every other one of them he had them all tied up except for the one that was hiding under the bed took them each individually into the next room stabbed them to death and then came in and got the next one took took the whole evening to do the one hid under the bed paralyzed now she could have hopped out at any moment one after she mm -hmm. he'd taken the other ones into the room to kill him and ran out and screamed for some help maybe saved three or four of them mm -hmm. maybe five or six of them whatever but she didn't now, I'm not blaming her. I'm just saying it, it's interesting how people uh, react. Later on, by the way, this guy, uh, and she didn't come out until the following morning, she by the way. Traumatizing. She and then I thought nursing students, yeah, yeah. and I thought all Trauma. nurses are nuts, and she was trauma traumatized at yeah. some other time. Yeah. And that's why, she literally, froze. Froze. the guy did his damage at 10 o'clock at night from yeah. like 10 to midnight. She came out at 9 the next morning yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. And then I thought trauma survivor, yeah. and I yeah. thought nursing a student. And then I started thinking about Richard Speck and uh, realized that he was... Uh, then she convicted him. Oh, and, right. uh, she was all, all the evidence yeah. they need needed in uh, 1967. 
And, and he got convicted in June of 67. And the judge was like, well, we'll see you in the uh, electric chair in uh, September. And two months later, we'll see you in this. And then something happened, and there was this, there was that, and there. And then I fast forward in my mind to the videotape of him when he was in the joint just before he died 25 years later. Breast, breast implants, breast, yeah. doing coke, yeah. uh, having parties with guys. And I thought, really? Really all you uh, anti-death penalty pussies out there? This is it? This guy can systematically just take nurses uh, into a room, stab them and kill them, the girls in their late teens, early 20s. And uh, yeah, he gets 20 years of uh, boob jobs, doing blow, uh, sucking off uh, inmates, uh, having a good time. I mean, you know, whatever he's doing inside, he, it's a party for him. That, that's what he gets to do. You had him in the chair. You were this close to having him in the chair 25 years ago, and this is what? Taxpayers will just pay for this guy to do this? Really? That's what we want? That's our plan? That's justice? That's justice? Guy's got uh, guys on estrogen and doing uh, coke off the ass of some uh, prisoner? That's, that's, that's really, that's what, that, that all worked out for everybody? That's how, that's how it's supposed to be? Is we're all planning on? And, and what about the families of the uh, nine nurses? That that, that's what I they think... want? That's what they have in mind? That's what they deserve? Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. All right, let's take a little break, Drew. Right. I know you have thoughts, but we got to take a break. All right. All right. We'll sure. be back after this. Love Line. We'll be right back. Love Line is brought to you by Harold and Kamar. Go to White Castle in theaters this Friday, July 23rd for a special advance sneak preview. Hey, everybody, Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E. One nine one. All right, there, buddy boy. So I was uh, going nuts on uh, Richard Speck, the uh, serial killer, yeah. killed all those nurses in yeah. the sixties, and then became a uh, sex toy in the joint. Yeah. They had videotape of it. it was just yeah. doing blow and yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And the thing, we we're so close to killing the guy. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to. It was just open and shut case. He should have been dead in sixty seven. We kept him around for twenty five years and paid for him in the joint. Mm -hmm. And here's all. Here's here's all I'm saying. Um, the um, death penalty. Uh, I'm not not a huge fan of it. I don't I don't think it needs to be done for uh, the guy who uh, gets drunk and uh, stabs the guy who's effing his wife kind right, of thing. Right, uh, right. Those crimes of passion and that kind of stuff. Uh, the guy who uh, systematically tortures and kills uh, nine women, uh, average age uh, twenty and four months. Um, let me go ahead and put him down. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it. We'll just weigh it out. I, I don't understand. I don't understand why everyone wouldn't uh, wouldn't just agree with that. But uh, and uh, by the way, a guy who uh, thinks it's a good idea to uh, put down uh, nine women and uh, who has that uh, rolling around in his head sees that picture every time he closes his eyes. Believe me, he wants to be put down. You're doing him a favor. Mm -hmm. You really are. Like a dog with dysplasia who can mm -hmm. barely uh, stand up. You put him down. You're doing doing the right thing. Mm. Know what I'm saying? Interesting. Yeah. And it's not up to them anymore. Guess what? You killed nine people. You lost your vote. Mm. That's all. Can't vote? We well, don't get a vote on this one either. Let's put you down. Move on. Drew, you got some ideas? No, I, kinda, I tend to agree with you a little bit on this. I, it's tough stuff, but yeah. Yeah, it's not that tough. You killed nine uh, nurses. And imagine, imagine the families of these people. Oh, please. Let's just put them down. That's all. Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, it's not like a choice between us putting you down and you uh, getting back to the lab to do uh, your stem cell research. Uh, you're just going to basically uh, slide into a, a box and uh, rot for about 22 years. If you're lucky, you'll pay, play a little handball. Maybe we'll put you to work in the uh, laundry. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Here, we'll feed you some slop. And let me tell you something. I've been to prison. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Kimmel and I went to prison. Yeah. And we didn't, you know, we didn't go to jail. We, we didn't prison, go to a drunk yeah. tank. We yeah. went to prison. Yeah. And we went in with the lifers. And uh, those guys, uh, food, by the way, uh, ho, ho, wow. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I mean, I, I'm a product of the uh, L.A. Unified School District. I didn't think the food could get any worse. Oh, really? It got worse Like, like here, here's what I figured. I'm impressed. I used to look at the food. I used to, we used to, I used to be on the little uh, food stamp uh, thing, yeah. you know, to get a little card for the loser sure, kids. Sure, sure. Uh, they'd slide you over the tray of a uh, slop. I, I used to think... The only way this school food could get any worse is if the principal actually just squatted over the trash hole <laughs> and just dropped the load right, right on, right between the buns here. Like it, it couldn't physically, couldn't make food. Institutional food could not. No prison food. Mm. 
worse. They figured out a way. Mm. They figured out a way to mm. make it worse. I mean, mm. it is bad. Mm. And these guys are miserable. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's good times. Mm. All right. What are we doing here, Drew? Talking to Cap. Let me tell you something, too, Drew. Oh, please. I go to the joint. Yeah. I want to go to uh, San Quentin. It's a little more colorful. I want to head out to the Bay the Area. View. Yeah, I got the, the, the wind breeze. blowing. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something about uh, San Quentin. San Quentin, that's where uh, Manson is. San Quentin, San Quentin, if there wasn't a prison there, would be some of the most prime real estate, yeah. Real estate yeah. in yeah. North America. Yeah, yeah. If there wasn't a prison where San Quentin yeah, prison right. is in Northern California, they could build a championship golf course there mm -hmm. and some condos be worth into the billions. Mm -hmm. Easily. Mm -hmm. Easily. Or you could head out toward uh, Edwards Air Force Base the out here there. and just stayed the yeah. one in the desert. Yeah. You're just sitting in a big ashtray, dust blowing everywhere, crows mm -hmm. sitting around. I mean, it's really ominous. Just like crows on the front. <laughs> just dust and dirt everywhere. See, that prison, it's that prison. would suck. Yeah. San Quentin, it's like, hey, you got a big rock house by the beach. Yeah. Eh, sort of look at it that way. I mean, seriously, Bay Area? I've eh, seen that, but it's beautiful. Better? better <laughs> you could do worse. Yeah. And by the way, should Manson be in the good one? I know. You're breathing the uh, fresh sea air. It's a hell of a lot closer to the beach than we are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you realize the air that Manson breathes, breathes is better than our air? But there's no secondhand smoke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's going to live forever. No, seriously. We got, we got a particle problem here in L.A., yeah. right? Yeah. Manson, his mm. air? Perfect. Pristine. Not, not twice as good as the stuff your kids are taking in, Drew. Mm. Probably into the 10 to 20 times better. And the climate? Better. Mm. View out view out the window, better. hell of a lot better than yours. Yeah. All right? Yeah. All right. Can't send him to the crappy one? <sighs> Got to go to the good one. Yeah. All right. Cat. Cat? 15. Yeah. What's going on? Hi. What's happening? Nothing much. Oh, man. I got to get some of that Manson air. <laughs> True. We should bottle the Manson air. It's great. <laughs> Beautiful San Quentin Bay Area air. <laughs> Bring it in. Yeah. Bring it in. Cat, what's going on? <sighs> okay. Do you want me to tell you my story? Yeah. Please. Okay, um, I got drunk for my birthday on my 15th birthday, and my sister's boyfriend's brother was there. Uh-huh. Because we're friends. And we had sex, and he said that he wanted to be with me. Like, you know, girlfriend and boyfriend. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, you know, I say yes. And the next day, he just starts cussing at me and everything, and just going off on me for no apparent reason. But he said he told you he wanted to be the boyfriend before you had sex. Yes. Yeah. Well, the guys will say anything to have sex. Yeah. Anything. Drew told a chick he was going to buy her a houseboat once. Yeah. She wants to get in her pants. Well, actually, I actually bought the houseboat. Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh, okay. But it's, the guys really, they, they, they can be awful with that kind of nonsense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It really hurt me. So my sister yeah. talked to him when he went down because he lives on the mountain and he came downtown. Well... My sister Hold on a second, Cat. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I bet his hair is better than Manson's bet, hair. Yeah, better than Cat's. Coming down from the mountain. To the downtown. I picture him like... I'm just thinking of the Unabomber. <laughs> I'm just imagining. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I, I was picturing more Jeremiah Johnson. Yeah, you know? yeah. Guy with buck skin. How old is the guy? Carrying a, there, carrying a gun. Doesn't... Drinking out of a boat of sack. He, you know? may not, oh. he may not have a birthday. They may not know how old Oh, they don't know. Yeah. They don't have records. Let's see. Let's see. No. <laughs> No, no. I just I, I don't know if he's even a youngin anymore. How old is he? He's fifteen. 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 All right. And he came down to the city. Yes. Your sister talked to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what happened? And he he apologized to me and asked me out, and I told him I'd think about it, and I don't know what to do. Well, no harm. In, do you like him? Except I do for his a lot, and I've yeah. known him for a long time, and yeah. I really All right, well, like listen. Well, when, when does he have to head back up to the mountain? Like, a couple days ago. He left. Oh, okay. So, like, when bear hunting season opens up, uh, no, they should go get some meat there. for the winter? Elk. Elk, okay. But they got to they get some, uh, like, caribou and start yeah. drying the meat. But can't, uh, uh, pemmican. Is this something, how often could you see him? I get to see him every weekend. Every weekend when he comes down with your sister's boyfriend? Yeah. No, my sister's boyfriend lives here, and he lives up on the mountain. Okay. Uh, why, uh, why did he just start cussing at you for no good reason? Well, he was drunk and everything, but it really, uh, it still upset, it upset in me. Like, yeah. Okay, yeah. I understand. The, the, I don't trust this guy. I don't either. I don't it does like not sound guy. like a good guy. Can't. How about you find a guy, 
uh, from a valley. Because Shake it up a little. That I go out with is usually a one night stand, and this last guy that I went out with, um, I never had sex with him. All I did was make out with him. And uh, okay. He, and hey, hey, cat, cat, cat. Stop cat. with the sex. Cat. L- listen to me. Would you please listen to me for one second? Okay. Please, please, please. I'm a genius, or at least a relative genius compared to your 15 year old ass. So listen to me. Okay. You, uh, you got something right now that seems like a gift, which is a vagina. That's okay. all guys want, and you realize that eh, guys want me. I'm cute. I'm, or I'm at least I'm not fat. Uh, I'm guys the, want me. I live at the bottom of the mountain, and uh, S Go, rolls downhill. Guys from the mountain. Want and me. everyone wants me, and that's what I'm going to be about for about the next eh, 10 years. Uh, meanwhile, you're not getting educated. You're not learning anything. You're not discovering yourself. Only who you are to these guys that want to have sex with you. And, and, so you, and every so you, decision becomes about, should I date this guy? How and to them, me? you're just an object. You're not even a full person. Yeah, even if like. you do find one that treats you right, I, that's not who you got to be. Wh- who are you? Yeah. I mean, you need yeah. to be a student. You're 15. You need to learn something. Right. You need to develop yeah. yourself. You need to develop your personality. Not your personality and how, how uh, not your sexuality, your personality. Not what guys think of you, yeah. what society thinks of who you. Who you are. What who you are. Who you are. Yeah, what you yes. are. Yes. Do not get caught up in this. I, I, I really worry about it, and I don't know how they can avoid it, but so many women, especially the cute ones, and that's why I swear to Christ you're better off just having a fat troll for a daughter who can get on with her life and start developing a personality and education and mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Especially when you come from uh, what I'm picturing cat coming from. I'm picturing a house with like, you know, mud between logs kind of thing and a door with uh, leather hinges. Uh, when, <laughs> when I, that's what I'm picturing, by the way. Uh, they just realize like whatever a guy thinks of me is who I am. That's a, that's all, all over me. And by the way, these are the women I ended up talking to in 10 years, and they weren't sure who fought in World War II. Right. They don't know anything. Right. They just, everything's on hold. It's all about who wants to have sex with yeah. me, uh, how can I present to guys, yeah. what does he think of me, who, what's he doing to me that's wrong. Yeah, right. Forget it. Forget it. Uh, Forget it. Go to school, learn something. Go to here, college, learn something. She, or just get a hobby. Well, Start playing well taken, guitar. Well, well taken, but she is going to still have relationships, no doubt. So here's how to best conduct those. No sex. A, tri- a two-year moratorium on sex. Just stop that. Are you kidding? And just date guys. Two days just date is them. the over-under. And be very picky and don't <laughs> don't get a boyfriend. Just date and then work on yourself, as Adam suggested. Yeah. Uh, anything me, else than that, it's going to be a uh, Let me tell you what picky the cat is. I'm uh, only dating guys with uh, rope belts, not rope suspenders. No more of them. Well, we brought it out to the Valley, guys. Yeah. Here we go. All right. All right. Let's take a break. All right. Come break on. it down. We got a, oh, we got a Germany or Florida coming up. Want to do it quickly? Quickly. All right. Here we go. Quickly. C- Kostya? Kostya. Kostya. All right. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. There's a fighter called uh, Kostya Zoo. Oh, I heard about him. Yeah, you ever heard of him? Yeah, I he have doesn't pronounce he doesn't pronounce it. He doesn't pronounce it Costia Zoo. It's Kostya Zoo. Really? Yeah. What kind of name is that? It's uh, it's Russian from yeah. Greek. Mm-hmm. All right, go. So, law enforcement officials are mystified by a bizarre new local pastime: young people dangling dangling themselves from meat hooks on a popular mm-hmm. sandbar. Mm-hmm. Local locals say the weird, the wild behavior is becoming yeah. tradition. Mm-hmm. Police found that five young people had erected a bamboo tripod mm-hmm. and hung meat hooks from it. A young woman, her feet brushing the surface of the shallow water, mm-hmm. dangled from the frame, hooks embedded firmly in her in her shoulders. Mm-hmm. To um, a police, sorry, I like edited this story. I'll screw it up to yeah. like. Leo. Yeah, I don't know how many sandbars are in you Germany. You should have edited out yeah. sandbar, but I don't think there are too many. So let's go with Florida. We're going Florida, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Come on, <laughs> and police too. What? This beach is in Germany. I don't. Uh, I don't know. They have sandbars. I you never hear sandbars. about sandbars. And how many beaches? Uh, do they have a lot of beach? Uh, they have meat hooks, though. I mean, that's clearly Germanic. Uh, we're still not. going. We're going. We're going Florida. No, the meat okay, hook thing is right, a, sort though. of an it's North American Indian thing. The Cherokee and stuff. We're going Florida. Say. Yeah. Well, yeah. they say they're part of. All right, it's Florida. Whatever. Also, I heard the story uh, earlier at Kimmel. Oh. How many, is it Germany big sandbar area? No. No. Yeah. They don't, is it, uh, is there ocean. ocean access? I, I'm trying to think. Uh, I'm trying to picture a, uh, Maybe up north. What's uh, if Germany's uh, landlocked or not? They, they got like a Rhine be. and stuff. Well, what uh, must be some access up north? Let's take a look at a map. Let's go take a look at Germany. Right. 
We can't. We got your best of <laughs> Chris. Map of Europe. Hey, Chris, you heard of Germany? <laughs> I know they don't let you talk about other countries. Where is that? Junior college. It's in Canada. No uh, way. I'm telling you. That's cool, man. Get on like MapQuest or something and uh, find us a picture of Germany. Let's try to figure right out uh, how much uh, ocean is around it, if uh, any. Well, what, what, when you learned about uh, it, okay. what were these people doing? What was the nature of this ritual? Uh, they're just hanging themselves from hooks. They, the people uh, have done that for a long time. It's a North American Indian thing. It is? Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. That's good times. Good times. Take a quick break. We'll be right back. True. Yeah. What are women most attracted to? Confident guys. That's right. You can't buy that confidence. At least you couldn't until now. What do we got? You got Axe deodorant body spray. Oh my gosh. Spray that off line. Everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. All right, everybody, boy, what's happening there, Drew? Those of you that heard just sort of saying something like this, this is actually the show. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're now doing the show. <laughs> we, were, uh, we, were ta- uh, we were taping some uh, best ofs, and um, the way we, uh, well, maybe people should, maybe sure. we should clue people into oh, the whole best of thing. Of course. <clears throat> Here's what happens. Uh, Engineer Anderson goes ahead and uh, picks the best of stuff. He uh, he uh, takes some good names, some good guests, some good people. Some he, you know, if there's a good show, he marks it down. So about once every eighteen months, he, he gets a check show, by yeah. show, part of one show, and uh, we get a good guest in here, and then he uh, makes a segment out of it, and we have to do a little pre-tape thing to set up the segment. See what I'm saying? Yeah, and we got to uh, record those. And tonight. Is the night we do that. Right. And we usually do that before the shows, but Adam didn't show up before the show. So we right. did it during the commercial breaks. Right. Except Anderson left the mics on, so it was people who were not hearing commercials, people who were hearing public service announcements, might have heard our voices over those public service right. announcements. But I didn't use the F word. For a change. Or the N word. Yeah. Well, that's surprising. That's, that's ten, five and minutes without I didn't complain, and I didn't do anything. That's we, true. I was all business. Yeah. All right. You ready to rock here, Drew? Yeah, let's go. Let's talk to uh, Kristen, who's 21. Kristen? Yes? What's happening? Uh, well, I um, was dating a guy for two years, um, and I decided to move in with him finally against my wishes, um, but he was talking about getting serious, and he wouldn't marry me until I moved in with him. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, his cousin decided to move in with him before I got there, um, and she kind of took over my heart. I guess you could say. She yeah. replaced all my pictures with hers um, and started... No, he, she out. didn't say fart, Adam. She said art. Heart. I, th- I thought part or heart. 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 With a P. Part. 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 My, my part. Her, her role. Her role. Her role at the house. Okay. Role. That's, That's uh, his cousin. His cousin. His first cousin. Moved yeah. in with him. Yeah. A female. A female. 22. And replace the pictures of him and, and you with pictures of he and him she and her that's oh. weird all right weird i know um and then start picking out his clothes all right what's the question we get the picture okay um, so i was wondering if this is just uh, he uh, we eventually broke up because he decided that um we shouldn't be together anymore because she doesn't want us together anymore uh, was that just because he was freaking out from the marriage thought, or was it? Because no, we have we don't know. Come on, it could be a million wait, things, wait, Chris. Because he was freaking out because of the marriage. Yeah, okay, I mean, let me let me let me let me common? explain. Let me explain something, okay. ladies. Gu- please, guys ladies. that want to get Guy, out, guys and ladies. Yeah, uh, but especially ladies. Yeah, like hey, everything was going great. We we're going to get married. We we're going to spend the rest of our lives together. And yeah, then his right. meddling cousin moved yes. in and said, so, "Please, Talk him out of it. please." He was he was done with you. And well, he, he was looking for a way out, but didn't have the strength to do yeah. it by himself, or yeah. Okay. Yeah, whatever. It's, yeah, this has nothing to do with her. Right, I had a feeling. Uh, oh, unless guys unless don't she give a, a good ripe ass about well, uh, what anyone thinks he, if they're really into you. Some guys are really bad guys, and this wasn't even a first cousin. This was his new girlfriend or something. You know, I mean, there can be guys BSing. Could have been bad guy. I, I know. I know. It makes it easier for you emotionally just to blame the cousin and make her into a horrible person and all that kind uh-huh, of stuff. And right. I, I'm sure she's no picnic, but uh, it's really his fault. First off. 
uh, he could have had the Wavos to stand up to her. But secondly, he didn't want to. He wanted yeah. out. If he wanted to get married, he would get married. Yeah, she, guys, she, she didn't brainwash him. Guys he wanted out. I, 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 maybe it's, you know, he, you know here's, I'm, I'm, I'm developing a theory here. I don't know. You listen, listen to this. Because guys seem to be so easy. Here's this, listen to me. Hear me out on this. I'm listening. When a woman is dating a man, mm-hmm. they seem so easily manipulatable. In right. the beginning, it's like whatever I ask, he does. Yes. Therefore, he must relate like that to all women. They must. He, they must be right. able to manipulate him. Right. But they don't factor in the reason. What's the reason he'll do anything she asks? Uh, the F factor. The F factor, and yeah. that's it. Period. Right. He is under a spell. He's not under the spell of all these other women. He's under your spell. He, it, maybe some other ones that he's interested in having sex. Well, with. that's the W F factor. That's a one two F. <laughs> But, but even the then, W-F-U even then, men will factor. focus. They'll focus their energy, and they seem to be completely compliant yeah. with anything you ask of them. Yeah. No sinister motivation. Yes, absolutely. Are you kidding? No. And by the way, he probably he could have fifty guys telling him not to do that. Right. No way. He's going to do it. Right. No one can dissuade him from that when he's decided that's where he's going. Right. So the idea that you could have some cousin could come in and talk him out of a marriage. No, yeah. No way. No way. Think about that, ladies. Come on. No way. Don't, and, don't, and, and, and replacing all the pictures with I her. Think, is that, I mean, think no, about there, that. Think some, how women think men must know, be, given some, how they behave around them when some, they want to have sex with them. Something's wrong with Kristen's story, and uh, no. I'd like to know what the real story is. Either way, he's gone. Either way, it was his decision. Either way, you got to move on. Yes. All right. And speaking of moving on, Let's Drew, go. we'll be right back after this. All right, guys, here's the deal. Looking to hook up? Call the Dateline. Sick of wasting time with the wrong person? Call the Dateline. One call is all you need to make. Call the Dateline. 1-877-889-DATE. You know what I'm saying out there? Adam and Dr. Drew will be right back on Loveline. There, Anderson. You hear us, Anderson? Yeah, caught us up. What'd you buy? It's saying go. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. I'm um, Adam. That's uh, Dr. Drew uh, over there. Drew, for uh, we keep going with the show, uh, it's real important. I want to get some numbers out. It's weather? Yeah, we're getting some weather out there. Oh, good. A lot of because uh, a lot of people don't know what it's like outside. It's not 72, it, it's been more like 78, though, most in, in the month of uh, July. Yeah. Yeah, but at night, about this time in the evening, it uh, cools down to about 71, 72 degrees. Uh, Again, uh, this time uh, next year, uh, about this date, what do you think it'll be uh, like uh, outside? 71, 72. 72. And uh, 10 years from now? 71, 72. 100 years from now? 71, 72. 100 years ago? 71, 72. Right. Well, guess what? Hawthorne coming in at 72. Chula Vista, 72. Ortiz is 72. Banning, 72. Carson, 72. Cerritos checking in, 72 degrees. Downey coming in, 72 degrees. Thousand Oaks, Bell Gardens. Reseda. Cut a hay. <laughs> Yana. What the hell? I can't even read it. Hawaiian Gardens coming in. What's coming in at Drew? 72 degrees. Bell Garden, 72. Granada Hills, 72 degrees. Gardena, 72. DeVore, 72. Newhall coming in, 72. Checking in. Bellflower checking in, 72 degrees. Who, who actually checked uh, in, by the way? They, uh, there's people the I have the, over there. The, actually, the, the mayor. mayor. The mayor, mayor of all in. these cities actually check in. Hacienda Heights coming in, 72 degrees. Checking in, 72. Traffic slow and go, by the way. Stanton checking in, 72 degrees. Garden Grove, 72 Saga, 72. Van Nuys, 72 degrees. Whittier, 72. Chatsworth, finally. Chatsworth checking in at a very controversial 72 degrees. Watch out there. By the way, 755, 55 after 7, 5 away from 8 o'clock. Uh, we've got a news traffic top of the hour. And uh, watch out for brake lights on the 110, slow and go on the uh, 405 and uh, uh, mat, uh, traffic in lanes. Uh, oh, let me get my scratch pad. Traffic in lanes. <laughs> Matrix and the number three. Oh, by the way, uh, you know we really got to work out. We got to work out the number count the with lanes, the yeah. lanes. I, I never can figure out the number four the f- lane, the three lane. Are we going? Is it right to left? I used to teach goddamn traffic school. I can't remember what it is. I have no idea. The one, the left lane. How about right lane, left lane? How about right lane, left lane? But then you got the middle ones. Yeah, who cares? 
Okay. The two right, the one right, the middle. Yes. <laughs> Tell you, slow and go. Look out for brake lights. Look out for brake lights. What do they call the morning? The mor- They have a name for the morning traffic, See, the, the rush hour. Here's the, here's the whole thing, Drew. Up until uh, I started listening to morning radio... And uh, they used to tell me what uh, what 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 the temperature was outside. First off, before I started listening to morning radio, I no would head idea. out in July in a parka and mucklocks. And, 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 and even when you got, and once you went out, you had you, no way you could tell what the temperature was. No way. No, so I, 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 I was I was close to death once. I was uh, I was in my car. I had the heater turned all the way up and the defroster going. Windows up in it your turned, parka. Turn, I was wearing I was wearing a scarf. I was wearing a like a mask that that guy robs a bank in. I said, like a full ski mask, yeah. a parka. I, I had it, my hands were in a muff. Mm-hmm. Um, I drive. was I was I was wearing <laughs> I was wearing my mucklocks. I was wearing a, a ski you know bib overall, the kind you use there for mm-hmm. skiing and extreme mountain climbing. Yeah, sure. uh, I was actually wearing those uh, those uh, like tennis rackets that they shoes. used to uh, go, they truck, truck through uh, deep snow, deep powder snow. And turns out. 104 degrees. How would you have known? I could have died in that how car. How would you have known? I have no idea how I would have known, but thank Christ for morning radio. And I'll tell you the other thing, too. When they gave me the tip, uh, look out for brake lights. Now, when I used to see those lights go on go on faster. the back side of a car, you, you I was like fast. a bull. Yeah. I was like a bull. I saw those lights go on. Pow! I, I just, my right foot would snap. Like, I would actually just sit there, sit there in the fr- freeway looking for, looking for, I didn't know they were called brake lights at the time. Well, even if you knew they were called brake lights, you wouldn't know to watch out for them. No, I thought, I really, I, to me, I, like I said, like a bull. You when just, I you go charging at it, of course. I saw that brake light. You see red. I literally saw red. Literally. I literally would see red, and my right foot would just, just plant the yeah. accelerator to the floor. And now? And again... Uh, not being able to react quickly because the middle of July, but again going out in full park and ski <laughs> ski regalia, hands in a in a hand warming muff, not being you know yak uh, layers of yak skin on me, uh, you know just just layers of pelt on me in the goddamn car, and uh, not, again not knowing to look out for brake lights, uh, just plowing at uh, uh, you know us uh, eighty ninety miles an hour in the back car and continuously never oh, over and over again, and then I started listening to morning radio. And you learn. And I learned. And I learned to look out for brake lights. I learned that uh, sometimes in July, uh, it, it, it warms up. You well, go. No, you, you could stay. You wouldn't you know, but they'll, they'll tell you. Well, they'll, they'll tell you. you. Yeah. They tell. They tell you. Yeah. And you got to keep listening the next day. Yeah. Because things could change dramatically. Uh, I mean, you know, you know, July. Day, day and night. You know, July out here in Southern California, uh, 103. Uh, uh, one day snowing the following morning, ice on the road. Oh, I, I know. Uh, you you got to listen. Know what you're you got to listen. Yeah, you got to listen. Gotta you got to listen. That's why you got to listen. Yeah. The other reason you got to listen is to find out what time it is, because I used to have to be at work at eight o'clock. Okay, how, 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 I would. I knew it was seven fifty-five, but if you asked me how far away that was from eight o'clock, no, I'd idea. say two, two, two hours, two, three hours. I, I would know what you're talking about. Yeah, I would actually. How far from it? How far from eight o'clock? Oh seven fifty-five. I don't know. What it's do not I eight know? Eight o'clock. I have what, to work at eight o'clock. What am I? Jet air, airline pilot? What do I have? Some sort of master's uh, de- de- degree in calculus? I, I can possibly know. So they, you know, I would look at the clock. I would say seven fifty-five. I'd say, oh, I'm gonna crack a beer. It's not eight o'clock. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not moving. I don't have to it's be worked till late. Yeah, I, I I work a half hour away from here. I got good three four hours. Turns Even out I'm still. I, I, they yeah, have to, yeah, tell, no. they turns, have to tell me how long it is. Turns or? out I was late. Of course, late. Tur- turns you, out turns out seven fifty-five is uh, fifty-five after seven. Five away from eight o'clock. I only you had do not know that I unless know that. they tell you. You still don't know it. They must tell you. They must tell you. They I must, had no I, idea. You still have no I, idea. What are you I talking had about? No you still have no idea. And they got to tell you every how morning. it worked. Right. They, they have to tell you. I, if they don't tell you, how are you going to know? Well, the thing is, is I have a digital clock. So 755, I don't know where I'm so it's at. It's just random numbers. I don't numbers. see. You know, if you random have, numbers. Yeah. If you, if, you, if you have a chronograph type clock, you yeah. can actually see it coming up. Of course. See it coming up on the edge. Who knows how long it could take to go that distance? Thank God. These uh, morning show uh, a holes have entered our lives because uh, other than that, uh, again, five day forecast. And then uh, I'll tell you <clears throat> about that time. I start wondering how the uh, Nikkei average is doing. <laughs> and when I find out that uh, the Dow is up uh, twenty two points and the Nikkei's uh, been 40. dropping and the index for uh, the, uh, uh, the, the the trading that's been going on in the Fortune five hundred. Com- I mean, uh, it all starts coming together. And then it turns out later on because they put the news at the top of the hour. Now, are you sitting down, Drew? Uh, Chris, 
Bre- put the coffee down and brace yourself, would you, buddy? Hang on inside the desk. Because let me tell you something. I was listening in the morning. I was in the morning on the way in. I was listening to some news. I heard the traffic. I heard the weather. I, I learned all this stuff. I learned to look out for brake lights. I learned how I long it was going to be to go to work. slow and go. Yeah. Out here in Southern California, it turns out a little traffic sometimes yeah. on the oh, commute in the morning. Wow. Wouldn't have known. Wouldn't have known. You guys sitting down? I was listening to the news. Listen to the news. You know what? Apparently, trouble in the Middle East. No, no. War in Iraq. Trouble in the Middle oh, East. Wow. There's trouble there. Really? There's some t- obviously those people. Something happened. I don't know what happened. There's a little trouble. There's a war. There's some trouble. Uh, there's trouble in that region. I guess the fo- the good folks there aren't getting along so good. Just I mean momentarily. Sure, have it. Sure, it worked out by the weekend. But the point is, is uh, I want to know. I want to know about that. Uh, I'm, thank Christ I was sitting down. I had no idea what was going on in that part of the, that region of the world. I, I thought it was just a one big maypole. They were all dancing around, holding hands, and, the, and you know, wearing the costumes of the different garbs and you know, embracing each other's cultures and religions. I had no idea that there was some trouble in the Middle East. Again, thank Christ for morning radio. Trouble in the Middle East. Nikkei average uh, up 22.5. Trouble in the Middle East. Holy Christ. Where would we be? Where would we be without this information? Oh, speaking of which, i got to go find a map for you. Find a map. Turns out uh, in the Middle East, so, sometimes once in a while, a guy, a guy put like a bomb in a car. Huh. It blew up. Wild. Now, he could have been one of these guys like me who wasn't looking out for brake lights. Oh, that's yeah. my that's thing. What, that's, that's my that's theory. A good, that's a good theory. I don't think I like he blew that. up the car. I just don't think they have morning radio over there. He was wearing a parka. He floored it when he saw didn't the brake lights. Didn't know how long it was going to take Didn't know what time it was. Yeah, <laughs> was. <laughs> didn't know anything. All right, so it turns out, yeah, trouble in the Middle East, Chris. Holy Christ. It could have bowled me over with a feather. Yep. No, tr- uh, no idea whether there's, there's trouble over there with those people. I mean, I know we have our own domestic issues, but the Middle East, trouble? Wow. Whew. Wow. Floored. Floored. All right, I can't, I can't wait to find out what's going on tomorrow. I have no idea. What, what do you think the temperature's going to be? Hey, what, hey. What, te- what do you think? 7, 755. It's, hey, Chris, it's 10 minutes after the hour right now. Oh, it's 10 after the hour. <laughs> So we got another eight hours hours of show, right? Uh, I, I have no idea. I got someone's got to do the math. Confused. They got to do the math for me. We got to figure out. And again, I, I don't, I'm, on, I'm, I'm on pins and needles about the Middle East. What do you think? Cleared up? Maybe more trouble? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, cleared up. Yeah, couldn't go on for two days straight. No, no way. No way. All right, folks, that got that worked right out. No problem there. That's, That's how it's been going since 3000 BCE. Yeah, sensational yeah. culture. You can't blame yeah. people. Wonderful. We can't judge. All right. So, here you go. I'll be uh, tune in uh, early tomorrow morning to find out what's going on out there. Rachel? Yeah. You're 20? Hmm? You're 20 years old? Yeah. Yeah. That's um, 10 years after 10? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to see. I'm trying it to incorporate is. some of that into. Uh, that's 80 away from 100? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. You're calling from Hawthorne? Mm-hmm. Let me check here. What's the weather there? 72 degrees. Oh, my God. All right. I think we tell her that. She wouldn't know it otherwise. All right. What are you going to wear tomorrow? Do you know? you have any idea? How could she know? She hasn't heard the morning report yet. Leg warmers, <laughs> a parka, mucklucks, uh, earmuffs. I don't know. I'm going to have yeah. to wait for the morning report. How yeah. am I You're going to have to listen. Of course. I'm going to have to listen. What's the question, Rachel? My house. What is the question? Um, okay. Um, I actually, for the past, like, few days or, like, a couple weeks or so, have been, um, like, throwing up, like, when people just, like, say little critical things to me. Huh. And, like, I just wanted to know, like, if that could, like, escalate, like, into a bigger problem. Do you mean you're forcing yourself to throw up? Yeah. Oh, well, that is a big problem. Well, you're for... But... Oh, when people say critical things to you, you force yourself to throw up. Well, not like, criti- but like when they just criticize me or whatever, yeah. I just like, like hmm. freak out, like, and it makes me feel better. Hmm. Yeah, that's almost like, that's basically the way cutting works. That's what people, that's why people do things like that. Mm-hmm. And do you, are you expecting to accomplish something by the vomiting? Are you trying to lose weight or something? No, because, like, I'm fine, like, with how I look and everything. It's just are like... Are you just trying to discharge your feelings or, like, literally... Yeah, like, because after I'm done, then, like, all the bad feelings, like, I feel fine. And then Mm -hmm. I'm just, like, happy. You you ought to look into this. You're 20. Come on. Are you in school now? Yeah. Where are you in school? At Bryman. Bryman Institute. Bryman. Adam likes that. Yeah. Are you learning to work in a doctor's world? (laughs) Yeah. What do you do over there, Bryman? Uh, Medical insurance. Yeah. Billing and coding. Yeah. I'll tell you, you were uh, you had a dead end career until that Bryman school. <laughs> I used to watch yeah. those commercials when I was a kid. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. 
Listen, that's smart. It's like a trade school. Go get. What, how long is the program over there? Five months. Five months. Five and months. Four hours a day. And four hours a day. And, and then when you get out, you get some sort of certificate or something. Yeah, and then like you get a certificate, and they put you like in a job, or you can start yeah, up they your place own business. you. All right, good, smart, genius, genius. <laughs> and and again, hold on a second, Rachel. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, see a doctor. Yeah, God, you, God you bless do, you with the Bryman you, School. You do need to get some help with this, Rachel. This yeah, is pretty gonna, serious. You, people can, these kinds of <clears throat> purging, whether it's specifically with intent to uh, control one's weight or how you eat, or if it's on an emotional basis, it, the chronic vomiting can really cause severe medical problems. And, and, and again, you'll want to tune in tomorrow morning to uh, catch uh, the weather and traffic because if you've got to go out and put chains on your car, uh, you're going to need a little heads up. You know what I'm saying? That's going to take extra 20, 25 minutes. You want to be late for school, okay? Definitely. Yeah, because, again, there's no possible way of knowing what the temperature might be tomorrow. It's impossible. I, I, I wake up every morning. I just, I, I got to know. I got to know. It's almost it's novelty how, how varied it is. Yeah. I'm thinking a hail size of softballs tomorrow. What are you thinking, Drew? Tornadoes. 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 Yeah. Hey. Engineer Chris, which, uh, what do you think for tomorrow? Anything, have any idea? No, I got to check the radio. Check the radio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cuz again, it could be snow. Could be snow. Could well, be snow. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? Could be anything. You can't hypothe- what are we talking about? Pro. So why why try? Why try? Yeah, we <laughs> Please. Or, or it could be 90 degrees it could like be exactly it's what it was every today. Day, yes. Exactly so, what it was yeah, today. Yeah. Possibly uh, the day before and, the and after, then the yeah. day before that and yeah. then the day after tomorrow. Yeah. Jenny? Yeah. You're 26? Yeah. What's happening? I don't know if you remember me. I talked to you last week. Um, <clears throat> no. I have the I have a boyfriend, and I have like slowly stopped wanting to have sex with him. Yeah, well, I and, sound familiar. Um, I was when my dad was a biker. You asked me if I'd had any near death experience or something with a I'm bike, sure. with a motorcycle. Yeah, we know yeah. Adam was imagining a motorcycle. I pictured somebody right. seeing somebody die. And I pictured a motorcycle accident. And then you told me your dad was a, a biker. Mm-hmm. But he didn't get hurt in a motorcycle accident. And, he, and you never saw anybody. But accident. he died some other way, didn't he? No, he's still alive. He's oh, he's still alive. alive. Yeah, she's taking yeah. care of him. Remember, she takes care of him or something? No. <laughs> no well, he, is this I, the guy who lives in the uh, trailer? Well, right. I thought he lived like. <laughs> he lived in like the dog run of some house. Or is that another caller we had? Look, was this one. He did. He lives in a trailer, like a camp trailer, by his parents' house. Right, yeah, yeah. Right, I right. remember. So he was sort of like I, I pictured. I pictured him sort of camping at someone's yes. yard. Right. Es- essentially, yeah, yeah. I remember that. You were telling me everything was great, and your dad was great. You loved your dad, and then turned out he was just sort <laughs> yeah. of a meth head biker, yeah, piece right. of white trash. Who you were responsible for? Yeah, just like your boyfriend. Right. So, and your no, boyfriend I- wasn't a great guy either, was he? Well. He's not terrible. I mean, he, we've had, he's been disloyal to me at, you know, a couple of points in our relationship. Yeah, that's right. All right, so what's the question tonight? Well, my not wanting to have sex, is there something, uh, I, I guess I want to... Well, you, understand. your boyfriend, you caught your boyfriend cheating on you multiple times, right? Just, uh, once. Once. And I didn't. I, I mean, I didn't yeah. really catch him. He, yeah. he came back from. He was out of state for work, and when he came back, he had some other girl calling the house. Right, right, right. All right. So uh, you don't want to have sex with him, but you are. You, are you angry with him? No. 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 Not angry with him. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Well, we. I don't, <laughs> there's. Oh, because not it's ang- been a long time since... All right, well, happened. look, then you, you sound kind of depressed, too. Maybe you're just depressed. When you're depressed, it makes everything difficult. You don't want to have even sex. sex. You don't want to do anything, really, but eat. Mm-hmm. Are you on medication? No. Do you want to continue this relationship with your boyfriend? Well, we have a two-year-old together, so... Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know. Yeah, but that that's not a ringing endorsement. Yeah, you're not in love with the guy anymore. Well, can that just happen, though? Can mm-hmm. you fall out of love? Absolutely, of course. Yeah, I did it with myself. Why do you think people get divorced? Well, I, 
I just figured because they find, I don't know, you know, big, All right. they grow well, listen, apart. Jenny. Here, here's the thing. That's, that's what falling out of love is. Right, we're, we're not really going to be able to settle this other than to say that your depression is going to screw up your sex life with your husband that's or not boyfriend. Just she doesn't like him anymore. I'm not in love with him. Well, and that's going to screw it up. But listen, the women, she's, that's going to. She's not in love with herself either, Trev. How and dare you? I'll tell you. Dude. I didn't learn that on morning radio. <laughs> I learned that from a little something called the Bible. <laughs> Uh, listen, Jenny, I know. I, I think this is just a carryover from the last time we spoke, which yeah. is it doesn't sound like you're enamored with this guy anymore. No. Here's what I am saying. You do have a two-year-old. Uh, you don't seem angry with the guy. Uh, I'll tell you what. Why don't you see what you can do about your depression and then make a decision? It's a reasonable. I try to work it out with this guy because not likely you're going to find great happiness with somebody else either, really. The fact that she kind of goes for guys that are problematic. Yeah. All right, Jordan's in wheelchair, has uh, no feeling uh, below his waist, wants to know any way to get the feeling back. Sarah found some uh, blood in the semen and, and a condom that was used. Bad times. Nick uh, gives out... Uh, Chris, Nick, neck gives out. Oh, neck. Oh, yeah, Kristen's neck gives out uh, during BJ's. God bless her for trying. 15, holy Christ, what's this world coming to? Steve called... Uh, You're going to take a car call. <laughs> I'm hey. taking a car call. Steve called. Uh, he works... Uh, he's out in Claremont. He uh, works for a, actually, a Toyota a dealership. What? What's the, what's the temperature out here? Cause I, uh, uh, Claremont. Let me check. 72. All right. All right. But again, again, listen to morning radio so you can find out what it's going to be like tomorrow because uh, you may go out in uh, thong back a speedo and a t-shirt snowing and uh, just some flip-flops or again you may have to uh, head out in a full a park and ski you know what they use you know when they you know the guys who run in the Iditarod yeah. The sled team guys yeah, yeah. you may be wearing a full seal Animal skin skins, too yeah. you have no idea yeah. you have no idea okay All right because right, uh, I'm on my way home from Claremont's Riverside where I live Temps oh. out there <laughs> Riverside I, checking in 72, too. All right. Just making sure. Just making sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, every place in between Claremont and Riverside checking in, 72 degrees. I wonder all if right. Steve got kudos from his boss for getting that 20-minute commercial for the uh, Prius. Pri Pri My dad, okay. Uh, the, this, is, uh, this is what uh, we're, I, was, I was complaining about it uh, last week, which is uh, I... I uh, I lease my dad a luxury automobile, a uh, five-year lease. Um, he thought it was four years, but, uh, oh, my God, is that guy out of it? Anyway, five-year uh, lease. Um, I, uh, I, le I, I lease some, uh, was a, like a Lexus or something. But anyway, the point is, eh, I paid the insurance on it, too. It cost me about 800 bucks and change uh, a month over five years, you know, 60 months. Hey, yeah. listen, and it's probably $500 a year for, for just registration in the state, for DMV registration. <laughs> You do a little math, it uh, turns out to be, I don't know, 40, 50 grand. I will remind you that our governor, uh, those, those yes. of you in the country that didn't realize why we kicked our governor out, he, wanted, he wanted to triple oh, yeah. that in California. It would have been $1,500 a month to release your dad a car. Well, Drew, remember I told you uh, many, many years ago that this state uh, and, uh, and Los Angeles especially used to have a rail oh, yeah. line, used to have right. transportation. Yeah, yeah. They uh, jacked it all out of here. They brought in the motorist, and then they started ringing nuts and basically yeah. they just started raping everyone who drives a car parking enforcement right. whatever they just rape everyone in uh, los angeles yeah. at least and in california because they know you need your car and this is a nice group to rape mm -hmm. and get tons and tons and tons of revenue speaking of rape uh i was uh leased my dad a luxury car and uh the lease was coming up and uh he uh however because he's a corolla uh did not see fit to drive uh, the luxury car that i was leasing him eh, Last 13 times I saw him. And uh, eventually when I uh, confronted him on it, and I assumed he was just letting my uh, stepmom drive the car, who uh, treated me like a prince when I was uh, in high school. Oh, close your eyes. Yeah. Or wait a minute. Did she kick me out of the garage when I was 19? Take huh. you out to the garage. No, kick me out of the garage. Too. Well, you're not even able to stay in the garage. It's time to leave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I got my garage room converted into a garage. Oh, uh, yeah, room good. for the car that's that I eventually good. would lease him. But anyway, <clears throat> turns out he wasn't driving the uh, luxury automobile because uh, gas is a whole $2.27 a gallon, and that car gets about five miles a gallon worse than uh, my stepmom's crappy car that he would then drive. Well, at least he was driving all of about three-quarters of a mile to see you. Uh, it was almost a mile. 
I'm mean, there and back. A mile. So, um, so, so. He say three pennies. Uh, uh, yeah, three pennies. three pennies. Yeah. My dad's an economic genius. A genius in that. So, uh, anyway, it was time to uh, lease uh, him a uh, new car. And uh, we were uh, we were joking that we should give him like a moped or, or a hybrid car or something since he's so uh, concerned with uh, mileage. But I uh, said, yeah, I can sign. One of him or got, him, Prius, right? got him uh, like the uh, baby Jag, the uh, cheap one anyway. But he doesn't he doesn't know the difference. He don't know it's a cheap one. But Steve offered to give you put you at the top of the list for a for a yeah the hybrid Prius, yeah, Prius. which is uh, which is a nice ride that uh, has a premium too. By the way, I mean, hey Steve, are people paying over sticker for that car? Uh, where I used to work, I'm not going to say the name, <clears throat> I used to work at another Toyota dealership. In order to get the car right away, you had to pay two grand over sticker. Hmm. At Claremont Toyota right now, we're charging full sticker for them because mm-hmm. there's such a high demand for them. I offered uh, uh, you, though, when you uh, wanted one, yeah. uh, <laughs> talking about the Jaguar that I was 100 bucks over invoice. So what well, actually we bought the car for, it'd be $100 mm-hmm. over that. Mm-hmm. MSRP. <laughs> And what is, and what is uh, by the way, I like the dealerships. Uh, there's two things I like when dealerships do. I like when they're selling cars $1 over <laughs> MSRP. It's like, really? You guys, just a, just a buck per unit, huh? Wow. So let me do some math here. You sell 50 cars over the course of a weekend, which is a pretty good haul. You know, trucks, RVs, the whole thing, sedans. They only make $50. Crazy. Then you got to pay taxes on it. $1 over invoice. I like that one, too. I always, uh, other one I like uh, that dealers do, we pay, we pay top dollar for trade-ins and uh, no one beats our used car prices. <laughs> uh, wait a minute now. How's that work? How's that work? You're going to pay me uh, five grand more than Blue Book uh, when I trade this car in, but when I buy it, it's five grand under low Blue Book? I'm coming to you. Uh, here's the deal. You're lying about one of them. Or both. Or both. <laughs> 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 All right. But I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing at uh, July over at uh, Cerrito Toyota. I'll tell you one thing. You know what July? You know Claremont, what July is it? Claremont. 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 Tell you. You know what? You know what goes on in July? You know what those are? Uh, dealing days. Dealing days. Dealing days. Yeah. Dealing days. That's July. Big blah. Right. The uh, manager screwed up. Ordered too many, too many units. Now we got to move them before the boss gets back. I like that too. I like Steve the said he was the guy in the commercials. He used to do that. No way. Yeah. yeah. All right, Steve. We got to take commercial. All right. I got my dad a jag. Sorry. Um, and what about Doctor Drew? He, he, well, he took that. He doesn't. He doesn't. Want, no, this guy's worth some pan pan. Let's go. He doesn't. He doesn't. <laughs> He doesn't need a crappy car with a washing machine engine. And he's got an M5. He's a real man. He well, burns fuel. He's a great car. Yeah, yeah, not for you. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hello. Who's this? Uh, this is Loveline. One eight hundred Love one nine one. Loveline. We'll be right back. Loveline is brought to you by Harold and Kamar. Go to White Castle in theaters this Friday, July 23rd for a special advance sneak preview. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Zach Drew. Phone number 1-800-LMGE-191. Drew's over there at the computer. Seeing how uh, Germany's looking. Yeah, there is a a port or less a seaboard at the uh, North Sea. Oh yeah, where it meets in Denmark comes off of Germany. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, we're talking about that about three hours ago on the show. I do remember uh, they had like a submarine port, but it was always hard to tell when you watch all those uh, all those um, World War II stuff. Like I watched Germany, they just moved into you know Poland and France and all these other places and just started using their stuff. So it was always unclear when you when you watch. It's like a German submarine port, Ger- German uh, this where the Germans kept their battleships and all kind of stuff. But it was always someone else's country, right? Got to be kind of crappy if you're that country, yeah. No. Oh, that a bad Laughing yeah, time is funny. over. How much? How much water? Uh, how much North Sea uh, comes in contact with Germany? Is that like a, turn in and uh, go in there? It's quite a bit. It's, it's yeah. It's thought uh, there was thought there was some of that, and but I wasn't the, sure. all you know. All of Denmark is attached there. No, right. and uh, yeah, no sandbars on the North Sea that I can think of. No, so, right, right, I'm look. looking. I'm looking. Okay, I keep talking. Right, right here. See, right there. That's uh-huh. the sea. That's all Germany. That's Denmark up there. Uh, yeah. So that's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. That's all Germany. There. All right. It's great radio. Uh, Come on back there, buddy. All right. God bless. I'll tell you the computer. What can't the computer do besides be uh, entertaining on the <laughs> radio? Well, don't worry. We're going to work that out. Are you ready to rock here, Joe? Yeah, Drew? let's talk about semen again. Oh, yeah. Blood in the semen. Sarah? Hello? 23? Yes. What's up? 
Um, I was taking out the trash today and um, looked in an old condom, and there was blood in in, in like the semen. Mm-hmm. And I'm just wondering if I should be concerned. Uh, how old's the condom? Um, like from yesterday. Oh. Well, it wasn't like an Egyptian condom, Adam, no. <laughs> no, I just... Was that a petrified condom? Old condom. Yeah, all right. Well, know, like, see, it's still a uh, soiled. That, you see, here's the thing. Old condoms got to be... I don't know what you think through it. See, that's a soiled condom. Yeah. Old condom would be something like, uh, from long ago. No, nah, old condom... Uh, here's what I... Old condom... Uh, seriously, seriously. Yeah, seriously. If, uh, old no, no, condom seriously. is a week old. All right. Maybe, maybe, maybe five, uh, five days plus. Becomes yeah. an old condom. Yeah. Before five days, like three day old condom. It's a soiled one. Used one. Used condom. Yeah. Am I right? I'll give you that. Okay. Uh, yeah, blood in the semen is not an uncommon thing at all, and it doesn't necessarily really mean a thing. However, it's something just worth checking out with a doctor just to be sure. It's remarkable how common it is and how infrequently it amounts to anything. Sarah? Hello? Did you hear what I said? Yes, most of okay. it. You're cutting. In and out, kind of. I'll say it again. That blood in the semen is very common. It needs to be checked out, but it rarely means anything significant. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Okay. All right, All right baby doll. I've got one from, more question. Oh, yeah. Let me check. Where are you calling from? Huntington Beach. Oh, well, let me check. The 72 degrees. <laughs> Fountain Valley? That's 72. right. 72. <laughs> uh. um, okay. Don't, 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 don't try to stump me, Drew. <laughs> Throw a city at me. Chris. Redondo? You, 72. Long Beach? <laughs> 72. Yeah. I mean, no one's faster than I am. No one. Uh, Bolsa, Bolsa Chica? Bolsa Chica. 72 degrees. Newport. Oh. 72. They're checking in. They're Coast checking Mesa. in. 70, 72. We're going to go. 72. <laughs> you can't stump me. Because <laughs> they've all checked in. What's like the fountain fountain? <laughs> all right. But what else? Do you have another question? Yes. Um, okay. In the Jewish religion, are you circumcised or not circumcised? You are circumcised. You are. Okay. She's a biblical scholar. She's a biblical studies. Yeah. So it's just kind of a oh. question me and my friend had, and I'm wrong. So thanks a lot. No, 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 no. Listen, listen. Circumcision was a way that primitive Jewish tribes distinguished themselves from everybody else. Mm-hmm. Now circumcision is Smart. sort of a common procedure in this country and you know mm-hmm. it's part of a routine child care mm-hmm. and the uh crazy uh, pay us and the uh beard down to their yeah, waist and the uh nutty hat and the uh wood the uh cardboard box uh taped to their head that didn't uh not a tip off that they weren't going hmm? didn't think there were just a band of surfers out uh following the swell how could you t- how dare you really people didn't know didn't know all the rest of the crazy crap those nut jobs engage in. That uh, wasn't a little heads up that they uh, were different, you and I. Yeah. It's wondering, uh, it's curious why uh, through, uh, throughout the, the annals of history uh, that Jews have taken uh, such a good ass kicking over the years. Possibly it's because uh, of all that weird crap they're into. Here's the thing, everybody. Uh, you show up, uh, show up to school uh, wearing the full length duster, the uh, kaboop. Kabuki makeup and the uh, aggressive piercings. Guy on a football team may kick your ass. And uh, you show up wearing the uh, crazy payoffs, the uh, beard down your neck, and a crazy hat, uh, and uh, the uh, wooden box, uh, prayer box uh, strapped to your head. You may also be in for a good ass kicking. That's society. Society asks that you blend in. And when you stand out, sometimes uh, Japanese have a saying, Drew. The. Uh, uh, the the uh, the nail that sticks up gets hit with the hammer. Oh. And uh, you want to stick up? You want to be that nail? Sometimes the side will take a hammer to you. Mm-hmm. Not saying it's a good thing. It's just in the human. Not nature. saying it's a right thing. I'm just saying that's how it works. Yeah. Your job, people, blend in, stand out. Sometimes the hammer will get you. That's all. Sarah's 23. 23. Let's just call him from Huntington Beach. Ask her if she if she's trying to. All right. Sarah? Wasted. <laughs> you a good looking girl? Yeah, I'm okay. Mm hmm. Junior college? Um, no, I work. What do you uh, do? Did you any time in junior college? Um I took like one class. One class. A volleyball class. Orange Coast. Volleyball. volleyball. <laughs> That's Chris is Chris is looking at uh, some hacky sack classes actually, but he may change his major to volleyball. I recommend it. What kind of work do you do? Uh sales. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. For and retail, uh, retail. Public school, yes? Uh, yes, and Christian school for three years. Mm. All right. All right there, Sarah. Just checking. Well, thanks a lot, you guys. All right, baby doll. Love the show. Love you. <laughs> All right. 23. Didn't... Uh, didn't know that in the Jewish uh, culture they circumcised the. Uh, now uh, let's again let's just some, cl- clarif- some clarification. Sarah, it's only for the males of the Jewish religion. Oh, clear? She got, oh, she hung yeah. up. Okay. Oh man, I feel like I fire off an email now just to make sure. Catch up with her. She's clear. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. And again, um, can't judge. Can't judge, and we must have respect for uh, all religions. They're all beautiful. They're beautiful. Well, they're all beautiful. You, uh, you know the you know I the, love the Jews. you know the source of toleration. All that, the, it used to be people would say, and this, this is you, you don't know, maybe know this history <clears throat> that they would say, well, we're aware that if you don't accept God and do your, get baptized, you're going to go to hell, mm-hmm. and and that we can't we can't allow that. I mean, that's a horrible thing to stand by. Let that happen to somebody. So we have to save you. Lest mm-hmm. we, we're convinced it's going to happen, unless we help you. Yeah. Therefore, we can't tolerate that to yeah. possibly happen to you. We can't sure. let it happen. Yeah. That's where all that crap comes from. Oh, yeah. And so then it became, now we got to tolerate everything. Yeah. No, the, the, the Lord works in uh, mysterious ways. I was just <laughs> I was just thinking about it, you know. And, uh, oh, you know, he's up there. And he's looking after each and every one of us, and we all have an individual relationship with him. And he knows us all, at least by first name basis. I'm not sure if he knows your first name. Does he know your full name? He's looking out for all of us. And I was just thinking about the time he was uh, looking out for one of his uh, souls uh, named uh, Adolf Hitler. when uh, Because it's the anniversary, by the way, today. The attempt to plot It's the anniversary to kill him. Yeah. of the plot to kill him. Yeah. And uh, some guy uh, brought in a bomb, put it in a suitcase, and like uh, slid it under a table that uh, old Adolf in, was in. Now, one of God's children... And uh, the bomb went off. Thank God Adolf was uh, shielded by some, like, thick oak uh, door table leg or something. Yeah. Saved his life and uh, went on to uh, cremate uh, several hundred thousand, maybe million, or a few more uh, Jews after that. And, uh, of course, the guys who put the bomb in there, well, they were executed. Uh, again, God's got a plan. Now, that one's a tricky one to try to figure out. Like, hmm, what was that plan? These guys, they were going to kill Hitler. Hitler made it, they got executed, and put in the ground with several million more Jews. Hmm. Anyway, can't question it. Cannot question. Believe me, he's got a plan. I'm sure it's going to come around any day now. And uh, don't give up the faith. That's the point. He knows you all, and he's got a plan for you. All right? And even if that means uh, keeping uh, Hitler's uh, out, of, out of harm's way or uh, tossing your three-year-old in front of an RTD bus, whatever it is, it's a plan. We've got to go with it. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> it makes sense. Or it you, you gotta have it, uh, you gotta have faith. You gotta have faith. That's all I'm saying. But there's no doubt. There's no doubt that he's looking after all of us. That's all I'm saying. There's no doubt. Now, he may have fallen asleep at the wheel just a little bit for the guys who tried to kill Hitler and ended up getting uh, executed. Maybe just a bit. Just a little bit. I, again, I can't question. Uh, I, because obviously the guy's got, you know, he's got, you know, I want to give mad props. He's up there. He's looking after everyone. I don't want to talk any smack about the guy, but I'm just saying maybe with the thing with the guys getting executed or trying to kill Hitler, maybe it would have been worked out better the other way. But again, that's uh, hindsight 2020. I don't want to be one of these uh, armchair quarterbacks. Either. Dare you. you know what I'm saying? Jordan? Yes. You're 15? Um, yes, I am. All I'm saying is it's important that you guys all go on believing. Gotcha. And uh, then thrusting your uh, your retarded beliefs on everyone around you. What's up there, Jordan? Uh, well, I have spina bifida, and it's a a thing where I'm in a wheelchair, and I, I don't sorry, really... but that's part of the plan. Yeah, definitely. And it's something he's born with. Yeah. Did yeah. you have a, did you have a meningomyelocele? Yes. Ex- yeah. 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 Drew, real doctor, or just a love doctor. <laughs> oh, Again, oh. Uh, Hitler uh, missing out on death with the bomb, you being uh, confined in a wheelchair, all part of the plan. That, yeah. Totally. I'm glad you know that. Yeah. So what's going on? Um, and I don't have any feeling in my groinal area. Part of the plan. Right on schedule. Groinal. Groinal area. Yeah. And so, I... So, uh, hold on a second. If I took a curling iron to your penis, would you feel it? <laughs> um, uh, I, it's really weird on day, like days it could maybe, on other days I can't. All it's right, like, re- just... I, I can feel pain. And then I can right. feel the sensation of pee, 
but I can't mm-hmm. feel any like pleasure or the pain or anything. Hmm. Can you have an orgasm? No, I can't. Yeah. All right, but he's but he's fifteen, and it and at fifteen I wasn't uh, you know on board so good completely with the orgasm department either. Uh, you uh, you can feel the sensation of urination. Well, I know when I have to pee, but I can't feel it come out. Okay, so that's probably a little bit different. Thank uh, thank Christ, by the way, uh, that uh, you have you know when it's time to go. Oh, I guess. Yeah, well, that could be bad times uh, otherwise. Uh, it has. Um, and, and you can, you would feel, again, if I put a, a thumbtack in your penis, you would feel it. It, it, it really depends. But I, All right, anyway, yeah. he has some feeling. All right. It um, really seems, like, seems like we could, uh, there's a chance we could that work you, on you could this have one. some function down there, but there's no way to get more feeling per se. But plus, he was born with this spinal cord injury. Everybody is going uh, just uh, full nuts ahead on, uh, on this one. I mean, I, I'm just talking about, uh, I know, you stem know, cell stem cell research. Yeah, full nuts, ahead, full, nuts, full nuts ahead, except not at all in this country. Right, right. Again, yeah. oh, wait a minute. We got Bush in there. He's a religious man and not into the stem cell research. That's right. Thank God it's not affecting uh, guys like uh, Jordan over here, combined a wheelchair. I was just crazy that uh, Reagan with his... Uh, it, Alzheimer's uh, and all that stuff. It was crazy. Now his wife's out there you know, championing uh, stem cell oh, research. Is she? Nancy yeah, is? yeah. And listen, honey, where were you uh, before your uh, husband? Why? Why? Didn't, when, how come you didn't pipe up before your guy got it? Yeah. You didn't give a rat's ass about everyone else who could have benefited from this technology. Only when your guy got it, we got to hear you pipe up about it. Interesting. All right. Yeah. So uh, we ain't moving forward in this uh, department, but. Uh, it does seem like, and, and, and I don't know, you know, don't worry about any of them creams or pills or anything. And also, Jordan, you're 15. So you're, you're going to start, hopefully, obviously things aren't going to work out for you like a, a normal, healthy guy who's not going to find a wheelchair. But as far as the orgasms go and other functions, you, you could have things some. may start coming online. Yeah, you could get some. With you. All right, Jordan? All right. I mean, you shouldn't. So, you shouldn't be afraid to talk to your doctors about this stuff too. There, there are various things. Even things like you know, if you want to become sexually active, things like Viagra and whatnot might be helpful for you. It and it also it does seem like every time I hear any kind of conversation involves medical whatever, it's all and maybe a lot of it's a Christopher Reeves stuff and all that stuff is a lot of the spinal repair and a lot of this kind of I don't know if it's if it's n- neuro type of of medicine i mean it seems like we work big to small mm-hmm. you know 150 years ago we we're worried about just sewing up skin and patch putting bones back together right and as as the technology gets stronger and as we learn more and the sciences mm-hmm. get stronger we start getting smaller and we're working our way into this stuff mm-hmm. i don't know what the future holds for a 15 year old jordan i imagine especially if we get off our ass with the stem cell research stuff and we get these uh, nutball religious lunatics out of the way we can get a little work done and maybe when a guy a guy like jordan can look forward to a semi-normal life all right we'll take a quick break we'll be right back dude you got issues call love line 1-800-LOVE-191 hey everybody it's adam and i'm dr drew here to talk about axe deodorant body spray yes sir you spray that on, you give stink the axe. <laughs> love, love, love. Hey, everybody. It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Let's get some calls. Oh, man, we may have a record here, Drew. Yeah, we may have an on-hold record. I don't know uh phone screener Brian is uh, the uh, keeper, the official on-hold record, but we have 130 minutes. Yeah. And uh, 17, no, 8, no, 19, no, 20, oh, it never stops, seconds. I wonder Crazy. if she will be awake. Well, after my spirited... Uh, <laughs> High rate against organized religion. I can't imagine she'd be asleep. Kristen? Yeah, what's up? There well, she is. Yeah. <laughs> 130 minutes on hold. Hey, yeah. Last two hour hours and two 10 hours. minutes. Thanks, baby doll. God love you. Well, my question today, since like. All right, we got to keep moving forward with the show, though. We got Germany or Florida coming up here, Drew. Oh, we got to take a break. Oh, we got. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, we got to pay some bills. But we gotta, <laughs> I like that we got to pay some bills. All right, wait a minute. Kristen, sorry, baby. Just screwing with you. All right, go ahead with your question. All right, last time I called in, you kind of, like, like my question, you said it was like a t- t- typical 15-year-old girl question or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of, like, pissing you off with my questions or whatever. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> I was the one that called in, like, why can't guys stay hard when they're coked up or whatever? Mm-hmm. And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hillbilly. And, but uh, your phone screener guy said that this question's more interesting. So right. I wanted to know, like... Mm-hmm. If you give head too much, can that, like, mess up your neck or something? Yeah. You know the guy who called earlier to find a wheelchair? Yeah. 15-year-old spina bifida? Yeah. Copious amounts of uh, performing oral sex, as it turned out, would put him in the chair. Yeah. That's how Churchill got put in there, too, by the way. <laughs> a lot of people don't like, know that. M- well, like, my neck has, like, given out on me before. Yeah. So. It, that's uh, Stephen Hawking. That's why. That's what happened to him. You yeah. work too hard. You sever the uh, T. What is that? T's I'm, I'm going to tell it, my daughter that Stephen Hawking had got that from is it, from exposure to what, semen. What's what's the high break? The T cervical. T what? Oh, is it C, cervical? C eight. C. Yeah. C eight up top. Yeah. Yeah. C eight. You lose you lose function. Well, in the upper body. C eight. C five. C five. You sunk my battleship. All right, Christian. Yeah, that's uh, most people you see, especially the elderly, who are uh, confined to a wheelchair. Especially guys, uh, oral. That's what put them there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so unless you want to be walking around, you know, and you're getting around one of those larks or uh, using a stroke cane or something just to get through the market, I suggest you slow it down a little bit. All right. <laughs> yeah. All right, baby. Again, I uh, candidate not only for birth control for someone like Chris and his 15, but to actually for me to actually fill her up with uh, cement. Take her vagina well, that's what I, yeah, and actually I, fill I, it I, in. I would like to develop something that I would like to brick it up. in. Yeah, something equivalent of the the brick in the vagina. Yeah, just not, just, not a brick in, but to brick it, brick in. it up. Yeah, brick it up like a like a barbecue or smokestack. Just yeah. look, sweetie. Uh, we cannot have you getting pregnant. Do you understand? We uh, cannot as taxpayers, as Americans, we can't support that. All right, baby doll. Well, on hold for 130 minutes to find out if your neck can give out from getting yeah, too much oil. And at 15, if she, she keeps calling it, I mean, come on. She was so disturbed being the last time. I, 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 I know. Come on, sweetie. Uh, you're going to end up uh, doing doing porn in uh, six months. Would you just uh, find Jesus Christ? I rarely say it. Find him. But tonight you do. Find him. He's got a plan for you. Finished the plan about saving Hitler. He's going to move on for a plan with you. All right? Here we go. All right. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Here it is. Bottom line, it sucks being single today. Tons of lame people and no decent prospects. Call the Dateline. Call the Dateline. Call the Dateline. 1-877-889-DATE. Love Line will be right back. So get your problems ready. 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 the show, y'all. Thanks for uh, hanging in with us tonight. We'll uh, do it again tomorrow night. So until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Engold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.